Human beings have a need to learn, to understand how things work. It's in our nature. Unfortunately, sometimes when it comes to behavior, the experiments we perform can leave lasting effects on subjects that can be disturbing and permanent. Today, we're going to talk about the experiments that allowed us to understand learned helplessness. In the late 60s, Martin Seligman and his colleagues were doing research on classical conditioning, a process in which an animal or human associates one thing with another. Martin is an American psychologist, educator, and author of self-help books. He earned his bachelor's degree in physiology at Princeton and a PhD in psychology from the University of Pennsylvania in 1967. This is the time and place his foundational experiments and theory of learned helplessness began. Three groups of dogs were used for this experiment, so if being mean to dogs really upsets you, this is your warning. The first group were put into a harness for a period of time. Nothing was done to them, and after a while, they would be released. Group 2 was attached to the same harness and administered light shocks that the dog could stop if they pressed a button. The dogs in Group 3, however, were placed in the same harness and given the same shocks, but their buttons did nothing to stop it. Seligman was teaching them, rather effectively, that there was nothing they could do to escape the shocks. Once these three groups had completed their first experimental manipulation, all dogs were placed one at a time in a box with two chambers. In the side of the box they were placed in, the floor would administer similar shocks that all the dogs could escape if they jumped through the barrier to the safe side. This is where Seligman discovered the differences in behavior gained from the first part of the experiment. Dogs in group 1 and 2 quickly discovered that they could escape the unpleasant feeling if they moved out of the chamber, but most of the dogs in group 3 would simply lie down and whine while they were being shocked. Sligman wondered if the condition could be cured. He wanted to change the expectation that nothing could be done to alleviate stress, so he had colleagues demonstrate to the dogs and physically move their legs to try to get them to hop out of the electric chamber. They offered treats and rewards to the dogs, but even with a way to escape, a path shown, and rewards offered, dogs in group three were unaffected. They had been conditioned to think there was nothing they could do to avoid the pain and gave up. The condition was labeled learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is demonstrated with much larger animals as well. An animal trainer will secure a baby elephant's leg to a post that it can't pull away from. The elephant will struggle for hours, even days, trying to escape, but eventually it'll quiet down and accept its situation. When the elephant grows up, it will remain secure to the post, even though it's clearly strong enough to pull free by now. It has learned there's nothing it can do. In 1974, this condition was tested on three groups of human participants. Group 1 subjected to loud, unpleasant noise that they could shut off if they pressed a button four times. Group 2 was given the same noise with a button that did nothing, and Group 3 was subjected to no sound at all. When Part 2 of the experiment came around and the subjects were placed in a room with a lever that would shut the sound off, participants from Group 2 generally didn't even try it. So what was the purpose of all this? What did we gain from learning the behavior of animals and people in different stressful situations? In 2011, an animal study claimed that animals with no control over stressful stimuli showed signs of social anxiety and depression. Seligman outlined two types of helplessness from his experiments. Universal helplessness is a sense of helplessness in which a subject believes nothing and no one can help them out of their situation. Personal helplessness is much more localized. The subject may believe that others can help them find a solution, but they are personally unable to do anything to alleviate their stress and pain. 
Both of these helplessness types can lead to a state of depression, but the quality of that depression may differ. Those suffering from personal helplessness are more likely to have low self-esteem, since others can solve what they cannot. Universal helplessness is a much more harsh impact on a person, since there's no escape in their mind. This video took a darker turn than I expected, but perhaps understanding learned helplessness can help you clear up sometimes how you feel. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing for more videos are on the way. If there's a subject you'd like me to look into, please IM me on Twitter, it's the easiest way to contact me, or leave a comment below in the first couple days of this video. I'm also on Twitch, I'm really bad at being on Twitch, but yeah, follow me there and maybe we can hang out sometime. Until next time, be well.